And now for the Monero development segment. Hey, Ian. how's it going? What's Good going on? Nothing much. My camera literally just chose to go out of focus. Yeah, you look a little fuzzy the, today. The moment I went, we, we guys brought me up. I don't know. But I guess I'll be like Tuxedo today. It's a little kind of anonymous. Pseudo anonymous. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hear you loud and clear. So at least we got that. Oh, oh that's good. Uh, I really enjoy Body's um, presentation. I'm not much of a trader myself. But I like to probably apply those principles to my life, you know? map out data see make sure all my stories are adding up to something that makes sense don't just trust one line of stories really interesting stuff that's very true that's this wisdom to live by good point <laughs> yes it's not just uh things you should apply to trading but in general right when in general make sure all the stories make- are at least pointing in the right direction <laughs> but yeah um today um i start off with a there's even this big hat and oh, i don't let me call it a hack. This, this is this is the most interesting story where I went in with a with an idea of I thought of, I knew what happened and I did more research and it wasn't like that at all. So it's very very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a really cool superpower to have, actually. <laughs> if I could have, have like some, always some, appear some, blurry on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah always appear Face blurry on camera. Does. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is so. This story is about. A mistake made in a cryptographic life. I don't even know what a mistake, a miscommunication that led to people losing, I think, around the counts like probably over a million dollars in Bitcoin and other coins. So, but I thought it was a hack or an exploit, but it's not really that the more you look into it. So, um, yeah, and, and the name of this exploit is called Milk Sad. So you can Google Google that if you want to learn more about it. But, yeah, it's a very interesting story that gets at the core, I guess, of some questions in the decentralized space. Like, who is responsible for lost funds, right, when it's not something malicious? Wait, so, what, I don't know. I'm sorry, what was exploited, though? What, where did the, the hack take place? Oh, I'll, we'll get into that. We'll okay. get into that. Okay. I don't see. I don't. I don't, don't want to call it a hack because I'll, I'll. I'll just tell you the things and you can interpret them okay. how you want to. I haven't really come to terms of what it exactly is. So, okay. to here goes a news article. Milk sad issue results in nine hundred thousand stolen from crypto wallets. I think that's an underestimation in my research. I think that they theorized that it was around nine hundred thousand, the ones that they know for sure, right? But you can't really know for sure if, like someone's wallet was hacked because someone might not know yet someone might not report to it like if you get hacked what do you do do you do you email the the team be like i was hacked add me to the list do you go to the cops i have no idea so this estimate in my understanding is probably on the low end oh it's called milk sad because um you know when you create your monero bitcoin wallet the it gives you these words right it gives you a mnemonic phrase, which is like yes. it can be 12, 25, or 24. The the way this library was created, some of the, the first words were always milk sad if you use certain parameters. <laughs> oh my right? god. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so it, it it's it gets it's it gets crazy. If you use yeah, it's it's a I started last night, uh, albeit a bit late, and I ended up staying up late just being like changing my slides constantly because this wasn't what you what it says on yeah, so they call it an issue, but let's get into the actual specific issue. And to understand this issue, you have to understand that entropy is everything. That applies to physics, it applies to whatever you're doing in life. Entropy is everything. But in this case, entropy helps you secure your wallet. Because the only thing keeping your funds yours are your 24 words, your 12 words, your 25 words. And they're very important, because if someone gets these keys, right, they can have your bitcoin bitcoin is decentralized also applies to monero monero is decentralized there's no authority that says these are your coins the only thing that proves these are your coins is that you possess the password to transfer them right everyone understands that if not 
if you've been watching Min Minerotopia, you don't understand what goes on with your mnemonic. I, please get some consultations. Please, <laughs> please get consultations. Reach out to us for some private tutoring. It will... Yeah, some private tutoring. This is very important. These are the only things that entitles you. Don't lose your coins. And email Doug, being like, "Hey, I lost my coins. Like, who do I email to get them back?" There's, there's none of that in this space. You, you lose your words, or if someone else gets their words. Your, your money's theirs essentially. So very important that these words be random right you can't just have it be like right you can't just write down like random ones in your head because humans are really bad at entropy and making random numbers so in general the way that you assess how strong a password is is that you measure it in bits right so you would say if your password was either yes or no that would have two bits of two bits of entropy essentially so the standard for any like the standard for anything that's remotely secure in a decentralized manner is going to be 128, which is down here, which is a very big number. I don't even know if that number even has a name, but it's like three times 10 to the 38. That's big. very massive number. And that would what, what you would be called around 128 bits of entropy. That is the base standard for any cryptographic wallet. Any cryptographic wallet, you're going to have a base standard of 128. And that corresponds to roughly 12 words, right? So, you know, some wallets have 12, 24, 25. So if, if a wallet does its job well, anything above 12 words is going to be pretty secure, right? And then, but you want to go super, super secure, which doesn't really make sense in, in this context. I'll explain later why. You would use 256 bits of entropy. And that corresponds to this bottom number here, which is 1 times 10 to the 7, 77. So basically, to put that in some perspective, 256 bits is about the number of atoms in the universe, right? Mind-boggling big numbers. It, it's I can't even explain. It's really hard to explain how big these numbers are. But let's say your, your password had one bit of entropy. That would mean that you roughly had two guesses to make. If, it, if you have four bits of entropy, you have eight guesses to make. And it grows, I guess, exponentially after that. And the most important number I want you to remember is this 32 bits of entropy, because it's very important to this story. 40, 32 bits of entropy gives you roughly 4 billion guesses. Does that sound like a lot? Are you saying there's a chance? There's a chance. 4 billion <laughs> guesses sounds like a lot, right? It's more than 8 guesses, but less than the number of atoms in the universe. So, <laughs> so there's a chance. Remember that number, 32 bits roughly corresponds to around 4 billion guesses. And this is the guesses to cover the entire search space. If you were to assume that you only had to guess half of the search space and you still got the password, it would only be 2 billion, right? Large number, but we're going to get to that later. And, you, and your password roughly probably has around 1 million. Being on a, I mean, being on a positive side, 20 bits of true entropy in the password is pretty good for something that you remember and you write down. But keep this in context. I want to I want to contrast crypto space to the everything else space. So if your password has one million bits of entropy, that's not a big issue, right? Because if it's a centralized system, I can just put this little robot thing here, and I can rate limit you to one guess a minute, right? So even if there's only a small number of guesses, it's a, it's somewhat okay because they can only throw so many guesses at the platform. So it's not like the worst issue, right? Because you can't make a million guesses on Facebook.com. Facebook.com is just going to ban your IP and you're going to be like, oh, well, right? <laughs> They're going to rate limit you and ban you. So that's okay in centralized systems. Having, it's okay with an asterisk, but it's not as bad as in Bitcoin, but not in decentralized systems. So if you have the Bitcoin as an open ledger, there is no way to rate limit it, essentially. There are some things you can do by making people hash a password, do all those kinds of things. But if someone wants to guess you know, four mil 40 million guesses, they can easily do that with like a GPU. So in a decentralized system, the, the bare minimum you want to really have is 128 bits of entropy. And remember that those 32 bits of entropy here. So basically, just a summary of what happened. There's this book called Mastering Bitcoin. You, you've probably read it. It's written by Andreas Anopoulos, literally a god. Like, I would not be in cryptocurrency if it wasn't for this man. But in his book, he actually, or the people behind the book, recommend this way of writing a seed. It says, go to this 
install this program, run this code here, and you will get you know, a private key that you can store Bitcoin in. And it's meant to be a book that people will develop with and use. So I think it's targeted at developers at some point. But the problem with this code here is, is that it only gives you 32 bits of entropy, which you remember earlier is around 40 million guesses, right? And and the, and the surprising thing is about this code is that it can, a developer didn't misuse a library. This library only ever could give you 32 bits of entropy, right? So it wasn't like they went and chose the wrong library. This code can literally, by definition, only give you 32 bits of entropy. It wasn't, and the person who wrote this code knew that. So it's very interesting how, how this happened. I'm going to you know, tease you a little bit, but this is actually crazy because it only gives you 32 bits of entropy by definition. I found this from like 30 seconds of Googling. So this wasn't a mistake by the person who developed the code. It wasn't a mistake about it. They knew that this only gave you 32 bits of entropy. But the story about how it ended up in this book is very interesting. I'll get to that later. Am I going too fast? I want to make sure. <laughs> no, I think you're good. There's a lot of moving parts that I didn't want to bring it all together. So, so there's this code that only gives you 32 bits of entropy, which is not enough. Because how hard is 32 bits of entropy to guess? A gaming computer could, could cover that in a day, essentially. In a day, a gaming computer could run 40 million guesses at this password and determine deterministically guess every possible combination and look it up and on their Bitcoin node within a day. Right. So not remotely secure at all, but really bad stuff. So if you use this book and you follow the, the code in this book, your funds are probably not yours anymore. Right? That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And this is a big a book. Data this... Wait, I, I, and I think I missed something in what you're saying. So mm -hmm. why, why would, why did this code even exist? This was just for people for generating C. Why wasn't there some standard that was used that was much better than that? <laughs> he's got that in the slide. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because like you, you, it sounds malicious, right? When you think about it, it sounds malicious. Like, why would someone knowingly use this code that only gives you 32 bits of entropy? But right. how this code ended up being in this book breaks the question of who's responsible where mistakes happen, right? So I'm going to get that later, but that's a real, that's the core of the question here. And, and just to put it in context, storage cannot help you. If you put your keys in a vault in the Alps Mountains in, in a country, you would still lose your money. There is no, if you use this code to create your wallet, your money is gone. There is nothing you could do. You could use a, you could have put it, you could have ripped the paper up and like put it in 3 million pieces. If you use this code, it doesn't have enough entropy to be um, secure. So your money's gone. Terrible, terrible things. This is like, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, you don't do this. Don't roll your own crypto, do not do this. But the story of how this happened is very interesting. So Andreas Anopoulos posted this code submit in their open source book, right? It says um, BXC uses to generate a private wallet. But the actual code is going to, I'm going to just present the facts and let y'all decide. I have my opinion, but I'm going to let you decide who's at fault and how this happened. Because the person, I, I, wrote, I looked at this code, this line here is actually seven years old. It's quite an old line of code. And if you click on a profile of the person who wrote this code, it's very interesting because a character shows up that y'all all know. Uh, oh. We all know in the room. Um, Douglas Truman actually interviewed, because the person oh. who code is actually Eric Volskill. So you actually oh, interviewed shit. him. Yeah, him? small world. <laughs> Whoa. He's the one that developed this? Yeah, but, but no, no, but I don't think he's at fault. I'm, I'm, I don't think he's at fault. I'm going to give more detail. I just wanted to plug. Yeah, I'm, re I'm ready to throw him under the bus here. I mean, he's... No, no, I, I'm ready to, I'm ready to plug with narrow talk. Of course, Doug is so prolific that you're researching anything. <laughs> Doug is, is going to show up. We've spoken to a lot of people. We really have. Some way. I don't know. I literally started this off. Didn't... So did this just naturally I... show up while you were looking up the guy? Yeah, it's naturally Eric? showed up. I'm like, oh, oh that's amazing. Who's him? And the images is like the third images is like this interview happening. It's like actually, I don't. Doug is prolific, people. Like, like just to understand how prolific Doug is. But yeah, that so was an interesting this. convo, by the way. I recommend people uh, check that one out. Yeah, um, very interesting. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it for people, but um, Doug is 
um, a hard hitting interviewer. I'll say that <laughs> <laughs> doesn't let up, but I love it. I love it. So he wrote the code in the library, right? Let's make that clear. I mean, this is the book that it was in that it was spread. Um, Andreas Anopoulos, um, Mastering Bitcoin, Legend in the Space. But um, the, the thing is with this is that he actually, this library, when you build, when you build a library like this, usually the entropy is left up to the developer to choose how they use the entropy, actually. Mm. Right? Because it's a library. I'm not supposed to, your entropy is so important that most libraries leave it up to the developer to bring in their own source of entropy. Because entropy can come from many different places. It could come from the random number generator on the computer. You can do certain things to it. So most of the libraries recommend you do your own entropy source which this library did, in fact. So he actually has a thread where he goes through and talks through how he put warnings on the library. And I did look, look at the warning. He did put a warning on the library that you shouldn't use this directly. You should bring in your own source of entropy. Mm. But the warning wasn't that big, right? But at the end of the day, right, the code is open source, right? So I think that... Um, and the interesting part here also is that Andreas' um, book is also open source and free. So I think it was a miscommunication, it was a miscommunication, honestly, that led to this code being in the library. The, the person who developed the base library has a warning, kind of small library, has a warning or kind of small warning that says, do you should use your own source of entropy in this library. And I guess someone didn't read that and then they ended up in Andreas's book and then someone put money in the wallet. So I, uh, I don't know it, who's responsible. I don't know. Do y'all have any questions? Do I present the argument well enough? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. I don't, I don't know yeah. who, who should be. That is, that is kind of, that's crazy how this, uh, this library ended up being recommended in this mastering. Bitcoin right. It's book. like the most trusted. And right? then, yeah. It's like, it's like, this is like yeah. where just like randomly trusting stuff just because it's like from good people and open source can go wrong is like down the yeah. line somehow because of this one library that didn't have a super great warning now a freaking wallet is using it right. to generate m mnemonics and now everyone's money yeah. is gone wait so yeah. how many do we know how prolific the use has been of this and like what applications um, they, they know for a um, I don't think it was using a lot of wallets because most wallet developers know like not to just use like they entropies. If you get one thing right in your wallet, it has to be entropy. So a lot of wallets weren't using it, but the book like has been around for like I think like eight, nine years, right? So I think pe people are literally following the book as a trusted source and doing it themselves mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. command line. Like you can go back to the book and it has instructions on how what to type into your Linux command line. So I think people were actually following along with it. And there's no warning in the book, as far as I know, that tells you this this is not good practice, essentially. As far as I can tell, I looked at it and there was no warning. So people were actually following this, trusted this book and followed the book and instructions here. You can literally zoom in and see a BXC, do this, do this. You get this private key. So... And it, and it clearly yeah. warned in the book like that the... No, the book had no warning. Oh, I thought you said it mentioned that the entropy the, was... the actual source code, right? Because the person who wrote oh, the source book code. Had no warning. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So this is the actual code in the library. It had like a warning above it. It could have been bigger, right? I'm looking at I'm like, if if your default behavior is insecure, you should probably like throw up major warning flags. But like, you know, eh, it is what it is. But the book had has no warning. I think that it yeah, it says it's yeah, there's there's contributory never... negligence here. I mean, it's it's obviously yeah. you you wouldn't want to set some precedent where people who develop open source code are then liable to suit, right? It's kind of at yeah. your own risk. But then even Matt, like the book is literally called Mastering Bitcoin, right? <laughs> here he is, he's <laughs> teaching you how to master Bitcoin, and he's giving potential giving you advice where you're you're opening yourself up to, to losing your bitcoin i'm not suggesting you know that we move towards a more you know an even more litigious society where we start suing people like andreas for lost bitcoins but shit it, it, I wanna, anything, it, it's just yeah. bad it's just bad for his um 
you know his character and how how people will treat him going forward right they'll be like uh you can't you can't trust what the guy says i mean because yeah, he, he holds himself out as an expert i'm not um i like all the people involved in this and i my heart goes out to all the developers being a developer is quite difficult um but yeah uh i presented the evidence you know as far as i know allegedly this is allegedly don't sue me please don't sue me this is allegedly <laughs> as, as far as i know my hours of research this is a a true story you know so i don't know i'm of the opinion that you know the code's open source and it literally says you, they can't hold you liable so legally yeah you know but that would be hard that would be horrible precedent to set right if people start yeah. seeing open source devs and it would just it would just stymie all all creation but, people would be afraid but, to create code and put it out there yeah but i mean the library does have a warning in it so I, yeah <laughs> yeah you know? i feel like honestly the responsibility is probably like if they like you know they probably could disclose it better but really the responsibility is probably on the wallet developers for like well there was no wallet. It was the, so i guess the, the writer in your opinion you think is the like i don't know who's the wallet developer because the person is writing code in their like they're copying code basically from online or from a book and then pasting it. So all they, I don't know who's the, you know, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's this people just generating their own Bitcoin seed using uh, that library, like by itself on the command line. Yeah, basically they were following. Got they it. bought the book and they were like, "Oh, I want to do this." They followed on the book and the book, the code from the book was not secure. And as far as I know, it doesn't have any. Yeah, there's, there's no one to blame. That's that's like saying, you know, what if there, what if the flaw was even <laughs> deeper, and it was a flaw in the Bitcoin protocol itself, right? Well, you you took the risk. You know, you listened to the experts. You thought everything was sound, but there's there's some major hidden exploit in Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, who, who you know, Satoshi. <laughs> Satoshi gets blamed. I mean, he's an <laughs> uh, but that, yeah. that's it. No, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. You know, you're, you're playing. But I know there was several wallets that did actually fire. use that, um, based on like the website and stuff, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, you know, with the like in the like trust wallet and stuff. Or yeah, because it was trust wallet, yeah. the big one that used that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was and then a while obviously ago. They, they upgraded, us, right? Uh, obviously, <laughs> after everyone lost their money. <laughs> <Too> yeah. <late. laughs> yeah. I mean, even the even these wallets, though, when they're if they're if they're ever exploited, I mean, are they? You know their their terms are probably pretty airtight, kind of right? Like it's like it's at your own risk, right? Yep, they're not responsible for anything. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, so I, it's a good three question, especially this. This is something that hasn't really come up. Generally, in the like software space, if I give money to you and you, I have a service with you and you do something wrong, you're responsible. But it's decentralized, so I don't know. Like it's it's a whole different ball game than what we're used to. So I don't know how this is gonna. We, these issues will keep happening in the future. I don't know how it's going to evolve from a legal standpoint, you know, business standpoint. I I just don't know. It's a very interesting question, though. Who's responsible at the end of the day? You know. Yeah. I mean, my tendency, yeah. I, I would want to live in a world where, you know, we're not we're not holding the devs responsible. We're not even we're not holding people like Andreas responsible. We we don't want to stymie. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah people coding and, and and contributing it's it's at your own risk as the user ultimately at the end of the day and you yeah. have to make the best choices and when you when you choose a wallet you have to choose one that you think has been vetted by the community you know you're not choosing some fly-by-night operation <laughs> it's like anything else with the exchanges right it's what this whole movement it's about it's it's you know be your own bank it's what you know libertarianism is all about the responsibility with with great freedom comes great responsibility. So it's ultimately up to the user to not get figure out how to not get burnt. Yeah, I agree with Doug, but I'm just gonna, you know, I'm biased because I do write code and do develop laws. So obviously I'm like the end user should be responsible. <laughs> obviously, right? So I agree with Doug though. It is in, in the license here it says most of most open source licenses are like you cannot sue us. You like this is at you know at your own risk. So you know it is what it is. I mean, this this, this yeah. is similar to what happened to me yesterday. Oh, I, I went I went to the gym, mm -hmm. and somebody stole my sneakers. I change I change out of my sneakers every day and put on other sneakers. I lift my sneakers. I leave them under the bench. Right. I don't put them in a locker. They're sneakers. They're who who steals sneakers? But they got stolen. And you know, then I, I go I go up to 
the the front desk and I tell them and I'm like all angry. Right? <laughs> but it ultimately, it's my responsibility. I, there's nobody for yeah. me to blame. I mean, other than the than the schmuck who stole them. And I, I wish so I could weird. figure out who it is so I could go. You know, like, did he try them on first? Like, well, how does that out. work? Like, you try to do you try them on, make sure they fit, or do you just like? I don't know. Somebody, like... they, I mean, they, were, they were black Nikes that I like them. I guess other somebody else did, but I mean, that's like as low as you can go. Stealing somebody's used snitches. <laughs> this is at my my gym. I like kind of. It was one of those moments where you know your your faith in society just like takes a step down. I'm like. <sighs> Like this, I'm like we live in horrible times. Like <laughs> I can't. I can't. Well, I mean, you live in New York, so you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, even I wouldn't do that here. <laughs> right? Even I wouldn't do that. Here. There's no. <laughs> I don't trust people. But, no. yeah. it, was, it was my responsibility. Should have locked him up. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. But then also, I've seen some like. But then like, dude, you get to this issue of like, what if a dev is malicious? But you can't tell the difference between malicious and stupidity, right? Like if a mm-hmm. malicious, who who's responsible? But you, they look the same. Right, I mean, this like, yeah. this would have been a great, you know, if, if somebody was malicious, right? Like, oh, let me yeah. put this book, get millions of people to use it, and just sit and wait and collect Bitcoin, you know, off of it and exploit. Literally, that's like literally what could have happened. Not yeah. saying it did. I don't I'm not. Know. I love Andres. I respect it. I'm not. I would. Wouldn't even insinuate that, but the idea it, it, it was it, you said it was it was Eric who created the code, right? The base code, the base code wallet, but he did have I'm like, he did have a warning in the repo that said this is you know not good entropy. You should use your own. Well, why would he set it with bad entropy? Because why, um, why would you set it with yeah. with bad bad and be like, oh, by the way, you should in small print. You know, you, you better not like. Why would you do that? I'm gonna try to the maybe benefit. give a reason. Maybe it, it makes a live is like a, as an example, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, that's a good question that I don't have an answer to. Maybe I'm gonna do a charitable view. Maybe it makes the code easier. Maybe it's like, oh, this is just I can just run it, you know, as an example, play around with it. Maybe so I'm gonna intro, initialize it with bad entropy, and you can add your own. When you actually want to use it, right, you know, right? But then the way other libraries handle that is that they they just entropy they um give you entropy that's like they they don't give you any entropy. They just set it as zero, and it gives you the same word every time. So that it's clear. Right. So then it's like versus, clearly known that it's bad. <laughs> Do not. Yeah. Get it. Versus giving you like that looks good if you look at it. Oh, give you something different every time I plug it in, but it's actually not. So yeah. We should have him That's come a great on. Question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> talk about what's going on. I don't know. I don't want to accuse anybody. This is you for see, me. I mean, it, it, yeah. you know, uh, obviously this means nothing. But in my my talk with him, I get I get a very genuine good like good. Yeah, vibe. yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I really would be shocked if it, if he was doing something nefarious that doesn't come that'd, across. That'd be like as well. yeah, super yeah. clever though. Like honestly, like yeah, it would mastermind kind of big brain play in terms of just. But but maybe maybe in his mind, ethically, he doesn't see it as an issue. Like, well, be your own bank, guys. You. It's up to you. Like you know, I'm not I'm not gonna walk you through this. Yeah, I, even told I, you, I even told you it was shitty. Even and I, I'm sitting here waiting to exploit it to see if you've learned your lesson. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, cause like I think malicious devs should be held accountable, but in some context, malicious and stupidity look very similar. You know, so I don't. Right. I'm not saying that's what happened here. I think this is a miscommunication. Maybe that is, the library will be changed. There was actually a big debate because the person who wrote the original like milk sad release. The, um, he pretty much he wrote it or the team wrote the release saying we found this exploit and he sent it to the guy who wrote the library Eric on his team right and the team's like this is not an exploit this is just bad this is people using my code poorly and they, they went back and mm-hmm. forth and they they eventually they eventually got a like a CVE rating which pretty much says it was an exploit someone gave them a CVE rating so I don't know how it really I think it's still going back and forth but at first he was literally like this is not an exploit this is how the library's like meant to be used devs should be responsible for using it well so you know yeah, yeah. wait it, so- it sounds like a mirror the description part for the cve well. on uh, meter.org looks weird too it just doesn't yeah look, it's, it's, it's made by it's them. very interesting very mm-hmm. very interesting so still developing still a relevant story right now but that's my you know this is from me reading eric's tweets this is from me i went and looked at what he said happened so this might not you know this is me 
Actually, I, I remember now I'm reading. I remember Eric talking about the um, the software, the alternative software that he created, right? Libit yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah and, he, and he worked with Amir on that. Yeah. I, I do recommend going back and listening to that that interview. Yeah. Here goes a piece of code that was um, in there that wasn't. Uh, I mean, you mean Amir from Fire? Amir, Amir Taki. Amir. What project is he working on? Uh, I mean, right now he's working on DarkFi, but he's he's an old school Bitcoin oh. crypto anarchist, very, very very awesome dude. But he yeah. was a part of this Libitcoin thing. We've had him on before. Um, of course, maybe, we have. maybe we'll have him on again <laughs> soon. We I, I, I've gotten to know him well too because I've I've met him a few times now in person. He's he's a really great guy. Um, but maybe we can get him on. Maybe he would comment on this as well. But yeah, I think it's just. I think it was just obviously it was just a mis my my yeah, I would think obviously. it's just you know it was just a mistake that was made in the early days. Yeah. This was created in, in 20, 2011 when they were working on that. Yeah, I mean, and like right. I, I think I don't I don't think he's malicious because even malicious he wouldn't have waited seven years to export it, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, man. Uh, yeah. This is uh great as always. I, I love the I love these things. These dev report, man. You're you're doing a fantastic yeah. job. These, these are great. Digun, thank you, man. Stick stick around if you can. Yeah, we will go cool. to the special guest segment. Hey, Digun, spicy as always. Thanks for coming on. 